Hey, what's up, guys? This is Mark at Sound Theory Studio, and uh, we're going to be reviewing the Positive Grid Bias Desktop program today. And this is a uh, plug-in that you can use with your recording software. Um, for our test, we're going to be using uh, Logic Pro for the Mac. And uh, let's go ahead and get this started here. And so what we're going to do to get this going is you just load the plug-in. If you're familiar with Logic, you know how to do that. And we are looking at the demo version today. So, pulls up right away, you get the blackface uh, 67. So, go ahead and give us a couple okay. strums on that. Let's hear what it sounds like. All right, very cool. So, let me go ahead and give you just a walkthrough of this. Uh, we've been playing with it a little bit, and uh, I've had it for a couple of days now. Um, haven't spent a whole lot of time on it, but uh, enough to familiarize myself. So, you have like basically your signal chain here. And the, uh, the control panel, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the custom panel, is basically just the face of the amp. Um, and so these knobs obviously just behave in the same way the knobs on any amp would. But you can also do some customizations to the background. So if you want to make your own preset, um, you can you know, give it a different grill cloth style, um, you know, name it something different, etc. So there's not much to do with uh, tone on this screen other than just you know the knobs mm -hmm. <laughs> um but it's cool that you can make your own uh you know face amp face though you really can like design your own amp in this um so let's go ahead and move on to the next part here so this is where you actually start seeing some differences in tone as you mess around so one thing about this program is uh it's really customizable mm -hmm. <laughs> um we were messing around with different tube types, uh, you know, you can do bias adjust, things like that. I mean, there's so many options, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. But just to walk you through a little bit of this, so here's the uh, tube types, so two 12 AT7s now, so you can move those to like 12 AX7s, get a little more saturation. Let's go ahead and hear that difference real quick. <laughs> Yeah, sounds really good. So um, all kinds of options here. I, well, you know, one thing that I kind of wish they'd have added, and it doesn't look like they have, is different brands of tubes. Because even within right. 12AX7s, there's so many different brands, and uh, you know, they, they really do have different characteristics. But it's it's pretty amazing yeah. they haven't did this much. Even a little bit bigger tubes options, maybe some 6550s would be awesome. Mm -hmm. but, or, you know, different EL 34s or... So they have some of those in the power, the power amp amps, section, yeah. yeah. Um, and they do have, like, these these pretty common style preamp tubes. But, you know, I, did, I actually did a video not too long ago about uh, Mesa mm -hmm. 12AX7s versus Tungsol versus JJ. Right. <laughs> and there was a pretty significant tone difference there. So hopefully someday they will uh, add that feature to this. Um, but, you know, all kinds of options here. High and low shelf, uh, gain knob, just how hard, are you, you know, how hard are you driving the tubes. And it is pretty cool. The, I really like the interface, the graphics. Yeah, absolutely. The visuals on this is really cool. It's like, you know, it's almost in, you know, real time or, you know, as visuals go. Mm -hmm. I mean... I mean, these look like, they actually look like the tubes and the transformer, which we'll get to in a minute, mm -hmm. looks like the transformers right, and everything yeah. else. But yeah, it's, uh, the graphics are very cool. But, mm -hmm. um, and then tube stages, so you know, you're kind of talking about number of tubes. So if you bring it all the way up to five, it should be quite a bit more distorted. Yeah. Let's hear that. So that's one of the biggest ways to make a difference in this as far as your gain is just to, to add tube stages. Mm -hmm. And uh, that makes an enormous difference. And then you can set the distortion for your tubes, um, low cut frequency, high cut, etc. Here's the bias adjust. I always thought it's really cool that they have this. Um, many of you may not be familiar with this setting. In most amps, uh, tube amps anyway, this is a setting that's actually inside the amp. And, uh, you know... Most of the time, you don't want to mess with it because the voltage in there can be lethal. Right. <laughs> um, and and beside that, even if you you know have it unplugged and everything else, this bias adjust if you if you set it to hot, which is basically going to drive the tubes more, it it can greatly diminish uh, the life of your tubes. And the bias adjust has to be set right for the power tubes, really. But you know, on a program like this, 
no harm. You can just do whatever you right. want. You know, so that's really cool. It's easy to change the tubes on this. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to blow out tubes. And if you did, you just click. So, um, so yeah, all kinds of options. And, you know, that's just this one. I mean, we're just getting started. So, you know, there's an EQ that you can put uh, between the preamp and the tone stack. There's another one here between the cab or actually just after the cab. And all you do to add it or take it away is just, you know, move it off the line. So it's really easy to use. Now, um, the tone stack is where you really get the characteristic of the amp. Um, and this is another one of those programs where it's not going to tell you. Name this is a PV51. Right, right. Right. This, <clears throat> this is a PV5150, right. and this is a Fender, and this, you know, it's not going <laughs> to do that, unfortunately. I assume it's just copyright stuff. Right. But, you know, British Crunch, uh, pretty sure when you load up that preset, it's like an orange colored amp, so you can guess what brand that might right. be. <laughs> I mean, they make it pretty obvious. German Fireball is an Engel. Um, and so on and so forth. Mesa, the 5153 is like my Fender 5153, etc. So it's not too hard to figure right. out. So, <laughs> um, but anyway, this is where you can actually like set. So let's go ahead and like give this because it's kind of a clean setting now. Let's really turn it on its head and just give it like the fireball characteristics. <laughs> And then, you know, again, bass, middle, and treble, there are so many times in the chain that you can right. mess with the tone yeah. <laughs> that it's, you know, there really are just an insane number of options. Uh, moving on to the power amp. So here's your bigger tubes. There's the 6L6s. You, you know, can change it to an EL84, which I noticed brightens it up a little bit. Right. Let's hear that real quick. Okay. Yeah, really brightens it up. And again, you know, you've got... Uh, so many options you can change this to a solid state push pull split load you know it, so many things you can do um no definitely no shortage there now moving on you know obviously we're going through this pretty quickly because we could sit here all day <laughs> and and show you this stuff but moving on to the transformer it kind of cracks me up this is an option i mean they they yeah. really <laughs> they they really hit all the bases right i mean you know wow so and one thing I really like, too, is under the transformer type, it does give you a description of, you know, what's going on with it, what to expect out of the tone, um, which is helpful because I'll be honest with you, I would have no idea what to expect from each yeah. if they didn't tell me. By visual, you just kind of know they're all kind of different and mm -hmm. don't really know why. Right. And this is another thing, like, you'd never take apart your amp and pull out. That's another thing about, you know, electrocuting yourself. <laughs> right. you, know, you can never really... <laughs> You know, <laughs> now I want to I want to like trade out transformers in your amp, but right? This, <laughs> Probably not the best you have a idea. Few options here, which is really cool. It is very cool, and these actually make a quite a tone difference, which is amazing. Go and play, and we'll go through these. So uh, quite a bit of difference there, and uh, got pretty loud. Actually, we start clipping a little bit, um, but you know, lots and lots of stuff. Now, of course, this is uh, one of the most important. Here, you're going to choose your cabinet model, and you're going to choose mic placement, which is uh, is great. It's just uh, you know, this has to be in there. This is so important. <laughs> so you know, we can change this to like a you know vintage '30s, and you know, move the mic. You know, a lot of times when I mic a real amp. It looks a little something like that as mm -hmm. far as my placement. Uh, let's go ahead and hear that and I'll move the mic around. We can hear what difference. Very cool. So lots and lots of differences there. As far as mic models, uh, it's probably just because it's the demo version, but it looks like there's two. Um, I would like to see more than that. And uh, maybe the full version does, though I haven't heard anything about that. Um, another EQ after the cabinet. So again, tons of options. And then finally, you get to the amp match section. Uh, this part uh, is interesting. So basically, this acts as a real-world amp modeler. 
in that if you have an amp you like or if you can borrow an amp you like, uh, you can, you know, mic it. And basically the idea is you should use these settings to get it as close to the, the source amp as possible. Then you can use you can uh, sample the real amp and it will make additional changes to the tone to, to match it even more closely. And apparently it does a pretty good job. We're not going to test that today. I'm not sure the demo version even can test that, but there's, you know, there's a lot of people who are doing that and then putting it on the tone cloud, which is another thing that we should show you. So if you go to the tone cloud and this might be my favorite part mm -hmm. of the program, <laughs> you go to the tone cloud and right there within the plugin, um, you can start looking at this. So there's all England YouTube, uh, superstar. Mm -hmm. Um, you can, uh, you know, these people have been kind enough to make settings and share them, but it's not just, you know, these well-known people. I mean, you can go to all these other categories and anyone can update this with their own favorite settings. And, uh, I, I always like when there's a community of people that can share their tone right. ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very, very mm -hmm. cool. And, you know, there's all kinds of different ways to sort this, or you can just do a, a manual search. So very, very cool. The other thing I like, too, is if you go, like, to this, uh, let's say we go to the Featured section, go down to Modern Metal, um, you don't have to download these to try them. You can actually just click on it and hit Preview. Let's go ahead and see it. Cool. So yeah, I really like that. I mean, it just saves some time. Like for instance, I have an ax effects, which I think this is probably in comp direct competition with, cause it's a very similar idea. And on the ax effects, you know, there is a community of people sharing, uh, patches, but it's not set up nearly as nice as this and you can't preview them. You have to save them, you know, uh, up, you know, upload it to your ax effects basically. Um, it doesn't take long, but you know, this is just much more convenient and it's certainly much nicer laid out. So that's very cool. Last thing I'll show you is down here. There's even more options so you can control your input. Um, there is a noise gate and it works really, really well. Um, hum reduction also works very well. Quick snap is where you can just put like a series of your favorite patches and then you can just click on each number to go back to them, which is nice. Yeah. Um, and then over here, this I like quite a bit. So let's put on something a little, a little cleaner. Let's go to glassy here. Oops. Uh, let's try, let's try this one. Go ahead and try that out real quick. <laughs> Okay, cool. So this, this section right here is the room control. And what I like about this is when it's turned off, you get a very dry right. kind of dead mm -hmm. tone, which can be useful uh, depending on genre and a, and a few other sure. things. But you turn this on. Now, this is not like reverb or anything mm -hmm. like that. This is actually just simulates that the the uh, speaker cabinet that you're recording from is just in a room right so it just gives it a little bit of a natural room you know vibe but it's not like full reverb or anything like that so go ahead and play on that a little okay. bit and uh, I'll go ahead and mess with these settings I think I'll just turn like everything pretty much down here <laughs> It's very subtle, and I really like it because it really does sound like um, the amp is not sitting in a room. Right, you're just moving it around. Yeah, to mics. Yeah, I like that it's that subtle because that would be the real effect <laughs> of changing the room size. It would be a very subtle effect, and that does sound very realistic. So um, there's a run through of it. Now let's actually talk yeah. <laughs> some opinions about this thing. So uh, let me hand it off to you. So, uh, what are your initial thoughts on this? Um, one thing I should probably say, too, is that there are two versions of this particular type. 
this is the, basically the uh, positive grid desktop version. And uh, it runs as a plugin. You do have to have a uh, uh, interface to plug your guitar into. And uh, of course, you need a computer capable of running it. You need a recording program uh, to run the plugin in. And you also need a computer nice enough to where there's no latency. Because if you have latency, right. it's basically impossible That'd to play. That would probably be a deal breaker. Yeah, right it would be. And if, if you don't know what latency is, it basically means you strum on the guitar. A, a split second later, you hear it. As you can imagine, that would be really, really uh, confusing. <laughs> And uh, you can't really play that way. That's just no good. So you, your computer needs to be able to handle processing this fast enough to where uh, you hear it instantly and it just sounds like you're playing. And, uh, you know, most computers can, so it's probably not an issue, but I just wanted to point it out. <laughs> Some people do have really old computers they try to run this stuff on. And uh, if, if it doesn't work with low latency, it's going to be nearly impossible for you to enjoy it. So... Yeah, what, what are your thoughts on this so far? Um, and this is kind of like a first for me. Um, I've seen a few programs that were, weren't were quite as complex. At first, I thought it was, it was kind of daunting. I mm. wasn't sure. Like, it's, like, it's a lot of buttons to twist and turn and yeah. clicks and drags and drops. But actually, what I do like about this feature visually, it's just so easy to use. Um, and we kind of covered on, like, you know, as far as name brand amps, it's pretty visually familiar, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, so I was pretty impressed with it. And after we figured out kind of what each function did and, you know, putting in EQs in between here and there and how fine you can get a tone, um, was pretty impressive actually. Mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty awesome. You know, one thing I'd like to see to make it a little more user friendly is if you're familiar with tubes and bias settings and mm -hmm. things like that, you'll feel, you'll feel at home on this and it really is user friendly as far as how it la it's laid out. <laughs> But one thing I'd like to see, though, is for people who aren't familiar with all this works, which would be a lot of people. Some kind of description. Something, yeah. yeah. Like, right. you know, the yeah. Transformer mm -hmm. right here has the description. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, there's no description of what the compression does. Mm -hmm. There's no description of what's the difference between these mm -hmm. tubes. Uh, you know, it doesn't really tell you anything. There's there's no description of any of this. What is tube stages for someone who doesn't know? Right, it's true. What is a low <laughs> shelf? What is a bias adjust? What does mm -hmm. it do? The good news, though, is that even if you don't know what all this stuff means, you can always just mess with it and see what it does to the right. sound, and that'll pretty much mm -hmm. tell you everything you right. need to know. So, I mean, there's that. But, uh, you know, I don't have a whole lot bad to say about it. Um, the cheaper version of this comes in at around $100, and for that you get um, pretty much the complete co collection of amps, aside from three uh, expansion packs that are mm -hmm. currently out. And those expansion packs include the insane settings and all these other things. I believe the expansion pack was like insane, uh, glassy, and one other. I can't remember. But uh, those are 10 bucks each. So to get the amps and to get the expansion packs, you're talking 130 and then you, you know tax and everything else. Or you can get the professional version, which is 200 You get the expansion packs with it. You also get the amp modeling stuff. And apparently they recently released like a uh, an IR uh, input program, which basically gives you like uh, like more realistic cabinet modeling, and then uh -huh. you can share like cabinet modeling as well. Um, so it's called, I believe, Impulse Response, I believe is what it, it stands for. I could be wrong about that. But uh, anyway, I've used those before actually with the uh, Axe Effects. So it's kind of nice to be able to have those, uh, those uh, as well that you can upload and then get some more cabinet mm -hmm. uh, options. So you're talking 100 and between 100 and 200, but don't forget, you do have to have a nice enough computer. You do need an interface. If you don't have those things, that's going to up the cost a lot. If you already have those things, then it's not too big of an expense, especially if you just drop 100 bucks and get the basic. It's probably not as bad as learning curve if you already have this, infor this equipment and you're mm -hmm. familiar with all of it. So yeah. <laughs> if you're just pulling it out of the box or whatever and setting everything up, it might have, take you a little bit longer to get used to it. Right, yeah. I mean, you know, really the biggest learning curve for me was just... Uh, just going through all like, the options because yeah, there's so yeah, many. Exactly. <laughs> but I mean, you know, but it was really easy to figure mm -hmm. out. So, what do you think of the tone? I mean, what do you think um, about how this actually sounds? Without, I mean, I keeping in mind that this was just a demo. Um, I thought it was like pretty close to some amps. Like the cleans we were playing through sounded really good. 
um, close to what you know you used to if you sat down with said amps and plugged them in. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to see like what they expanded with as far as metals and like metal tones and. Mm-hmm. That could be just an EQ issue too. Maybe you could get it close to what you really liked. But mm-hmm. as for my taste, um, it was kind of limited. It's it's still that digital sound. Mm-hmm. Um, once again, maybe it cleans up with I don't know the insane tones or anything like that. But <laughs> yeah. um, and as far as the cabs, um, I'm a huge. I love to switch around different cabinets and stuff. So mm-hmm. I'd like to see like what they expanded on with that. Um, and I also would have liked to see an isolation cab. Like, so let's take a look at the cabinet models they have real quick. So you do have, um, you know, there's a couple of one by twelves, some two by twelves, a one four by ten, several four by twelves, and then you get into some mm-hmm. acoustics, some bass, and then these that are grayed yeah. out, I assume, were part of some sort of mm-hmm. expansion. The four twelve angle, yeah, yeah the four twelve <laughs> angle would be cool to hear, right? Yeah. You know, one thing that they don't seem to have that I would also like is to be able to put in each of these cabinets different speakers. Yes. That would be yeah. a really nice addition, too. And it is kind of funny what they chose to do and what they chose not to mm-hmm. do. Like, I don't want to put them down because they put a ton of stuff in there. Right, right. But it is kind of interesting to me that they let you mess with the transformer, <laughs> but they don't let you mess with what speakers Good are in the point. cabinet. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, that's kind of an odd decision, but hey. But, you know, I'm not going to complain about it. I just thought right. that was kind of funny, though. Um <laughs> You know, I I just kind of have a... Uh, I'm really a purist of tube sound mm-hmm. at this point <laughs> um, after playing all these years. And I just kind of feel like as the years go by, they keep trying to do more and more ideas with digital, mm-hmm. solid state equipment, plugins, things like this, trying to make it sound more like a tube amp. And they are getting closer. This certainly sounds better than like the Line 6 interface I had many, many years mm-hmm. ago. <laughs> Um, and of course the axe effects was a huge step forward. Um, you know, this is getting more popular and there are more of these things coming out, but you know, at the end of the day, you can tell it's digital and there's no way around it. And I did do some testing yesterday comparing, uh, what I thought was a pretty decent metal tone on this against my real life 5150. And there was no comparison. Mm Mm-hmm. The 5150 There's, to me sounded way more organic and real. I don't know how else to describe it. It yeah. just sounded real. Mm-hmm. It sounded like a real amp. Right. <laughs> and this, when I would switch back over to this, it sounded kind of, uh, you know, just digital. It just yeah. sounded very digital. But, you know, uh, I can't hold that against them either just because no one's been able to capture that tube sound authentically. So I can't right. <laughs> hold the impossible against these guys. I mean, they, overall, they did a very good job. Um, for 200 bucks. I'm thinking this is a good deal. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially if you are a tube purist, I mean, to lay that money down for a nice tube head, you're still yeah, a lot more. A lot more. <laughs> so, yeah, to say I the mean, least. If you're sitting in an apartment or something, or you got this on the road, I think this is a good substitute. Yep, I agree mm-hmm. with that. Um, but for someone who does own tube amps, or even one really nice tube mm-hmm. amp, uh, and I guess I would fall into that category... I was thinking about, do I want to buy this myself? And I got my answers for me. No, just right. because yeah. <laughs> why sit here trying to get a really great 5150 sound when I own a 5150? <laughs> no point. But there are, I'm not saying it would be useless right. to me though. Like the clean tones I thought were really, really good. Mm-hmm. And I could almost see buying it just for that, just to have a variety of clean tones available to me. Uh, but you know, I've got an X effect. So for me, yeah, there's not much point. But I'm picturing me like 10 years ago. I don't have the nice tube amp. Right. I don't have an Axe effects, but I do have a decent computer. This would have been awesome at that time. Yeah, especially what was out of then was out then was maybe like we had like the tone works mm-hmm. like the pods and all that. Yeah, the so pods I had. They're and, almost, uh, they're really just kind of did nothing there wasn't very a lot of variances with tones right. and stuff but <laughs> so i would recommend this to any of you who want to get a really nice recording mm-hmm. with very little uh effort right because this certainly is easier than miking an amp and figuring all that out not that that's hard mm-hmm. but there's there's a lot to it and this is much easier to use um and for people who you know either can't afford a crazy tube amp or just don't want to buy one uh, for, for anyone in that category, this is wonderful. Mm-hmm. This is great. 
I can't really think of any better at the price range. Right. I have seen some other plugins that emulate amps, and uh, they are pretty good and comparable to this. But I think this one's better. Mm-hmm. So, all right, very cool. So, one thing I want to do uh, before we go ahead and wrap this up and kind of give it a rating, because you haven't really had a chance to hear much of this during this review, I'm going to go and have Sean just jam, and I'm going to try to get a really nice. Maybe I'll try to get a really nice metal tone, and then we'll switch, and maybe he can try to get me with a really nice uh, blues tone. Okay. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started on that. Go ahead and start jamming for me. <laughs> Let's see what the insane has to offer here. Right, cool so you know that didn't take very long probably like a minute or less and uh you know i could sit here for a really long time and work on it but with pretty uh pretty easy to get like a nice modern sounding uh metal tone out of it i wouldn't say that sounded a whole lot like my 5150 even though that was the 5150 tone stack but it sounded pretty cool though so all right cool so let's switch real quick and let's see if sean can get me a pretty good blues tone and uh see how quickly he can do it all right all right
sounds think? really nice. Yeah, no, I like it. That sounds <laughs> nice. Cool. So, you know, again, took about a minute, maybe something like that. And uh, a really nice blues tone. You know, I'm really impressed with the clean tone. I think the clean tone I like yes, better than I, black game. I thought they were a lot more, a lot closer with a, a cleaner tube amp. Mm -hmm. And you know, another thing I've noticed too about all this, this digital modeling stuff is they seem to be getting really good with the clean tone. Mm -hmm. Like uh, it's really hard for me to tell the difference a lot of times, but the high gain stuff, that's where it's going wrong. So right. And I think that might be, it's not translating like with feel or maybe just attack when it's, in, I, I don't know what it is, but I can hear it's just like a, a crunch, mm -hmm. crunch rather than like a warm, like, low end yeah. I, I don't know it's, it's hard to, something missing there yeah it's hard to <laughs> it's put just, your finger on yeah. it i mean to me it's just like you know the, the natural distortion from an overdriven glass tube right sounds so organic i don't know what the, a better word for it right it sounds organic and it sounds natural and real whereas distortion from a plug-in on a computer is just staticky distortion you, just, I, you know what i mean it's just, just not the same yeah thing. I, you just hear it that it being processed it just sounds yes. processed it sounds processed there just, you go that's the word yeah it ran through a processed. strainer or something yeah. or just i don't know <laughs> but you know like i said i can't hold it against them because right. no one's been yeah. able to to capture that magic of the tubes mm -hmm. yet um though many have tried and and this is a valiant attempt there's no doubt about it and for the money I, you can't really go wrong i think right. it's absolutely fine and there's some there are some very good tones to be had. Yes, absolutely. But, uh, you know, I, the reason I keep harping on this, though, is because in my YouTube searches and reading mm -hmm. about this, <laughs> you know, I, I think people have maybe been getting a little overboard uh, certain times about how amazing this thing is and how you can't mm -hmm. tell the difference. Uh, I, I just want to go that far with right. it. Like, I think it sounds really, really good. <laughs> but to say it's as good as the real amp, I think is uh, that's just I don't think that's true. Right. Would be. <laughs> but. That's my opinion, and you know I have heard some people do demos of this program, and it sounded really, really good. And uh, but I but you know I've also heard them do demos of real amps, and I think it sounded really, really good too, and and better. Right. So mm -hmm. there you go. <laughs> but anyway, um, okay, so let's wrap this up uh, for software modeling, and let's go ahead and compare this with like solid state amps because mm -hmm. a solid state amp is also kind of like a tube emulator. Right. That's true. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, you know the Axe effects would be something mm -hmm. that's. Uh, Certainly not similar in price, but similar uh, style kind of thing. Um, you know, there's the 11 rack. I don't know if you've ever tried that. I have. No. <laughs> um, the 11 rack is another modeler that's very similar to this. Um, and there's many plugins out there. So, with all that said, but at around 100 to 200 dollars, what do you think? What, what kind of rating would you give this? Um, with this, I, I'd have to give it a seven. I mean, I think there's some cool features. Mm -hmm. Like we said, I mean, there are is there are things that I like. Um, I'm not going to go, you know, I'm, I'm also a purist. I like the amp in front of me, et cetera. But, mm -hmm. um, as far as sharing tones with friends and, you know, that kind of expands on what it does as well. So it kind of, it can kind of bring you to better sounds, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and just the features, it's kind of like a, if you don't know the ins and outs of a tube amp or what causes what sound and stuff, it's kind of a good learning. It's kind of a good teacher. That's true. I mean, that's a good so, way to look at it. Yeah. So this it, is a cool way yeah. to learn how all this stuff works. Yeah. So I mean, if you know you ever wanted to one day be one of the guy that make your own amp, and I mean, you got to have the you know the vernacular for it. So I think that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, all the features definitely work. Um, I just, as far as like my my personal opinions would would be, I'll give it a strong seven. I yeah. Mean, so. Um, I think I might go ahead and give it an eight just because I'm not all that impressed with the high gain amps, though I don't think they're bad or anything. Mm -hmm. I just don't think they're wonderful either. Mm -hmm. But the cleans, I think, are pretty amazing. Yeah, so, was... the, so the cleans are so good on this thing that it's, it's raising the score for me a bit. Uh, <laughs> um, and, all, and the other thing that raises the score for me is the price. At first, when I first heard of this and I saw $200 for the pro version... I was like, man, that's a lot of money for a piece mm -hmm. of software that, you know, when I've seen like line, line six has similar software for like 80 bucks that comes with an interface too. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, 200, that's a little steep. But now that I've tried it, I can see that there's a heck of a lot of features in here yeah. for 200 bucks. Yeah. And, uh, 
you know, and con- considering the only things I've seen that have this many features would be like an Axe Effects or something, which costs at a very minimum over a thousand bucks, and some of them are like over two thousand and all that. You know, price wise, this thing is pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. It's a great deal. There's a lot. So, you know, if you think uh, you'd be interested in it, I don't think you'd really go wrong. Right. You yeah. Know, for the the money's not much, and it does have nice tone, and uh, I don't have much bad to say about it. It's mm-hmm. really it's very impressive, and I'm super impressed with how much effort they put into right. all yeah. this customization. Mm-hmm. It's really, mm-hmm. really incredible, actually. So there you go. So I'm going to give it an eight. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Well, thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. If you have any questions, let us know. Um, and uh, if you have this and you have a different opinion, put it in the comments. We'd like to hear what people are thinking about. It's a very popular piece of software mm-hmm. right now, and they're doing very well, and there's a lot of people buying it. So um, let us know what you think about it. And uh, take care. More reviews coming soon. And uh, thanks to Sean, as always. Appreciate it, bud. (laughs) And we'll see you guys soon. Take care.